Chapter 4, Kefka, General of the Empire Meanwhile, outside of Figaro Palace, the sun had risen high into the air, as it was now morning. The sands of Figaro Desert were already hot to the touch, although, it was not necessarily because of the sun, but perhaps because of the hothead who was making his way towards Figaro. Damn it! Emperor Gestel's stupid orders! Edgar, you pinhead! Why do you have to live in the middle of nowhere? These recon jobs suck! A maniacal, high-pitched voice cut through the peace and serenity of the fresh morning. The man who was shouting like a buffoon suddenly stopped in his tracks and stared down at his brown boots with his beady blue eyes that were painted with many different colors of eye shadow that failed to match the rest of the paint on his face. The two troopers who had been marching with him stopped as well, and looked at each other. They knew what was coming. Ahem! The clown man said eyeing each of them in a way that made chills run down their spines. There's sand on my boots. The two troopers dove to their knees immediately and began to brush off the man's boots swiftly but efficiently. When they were done, they both leaped up, shouting Yes sir, all set sir. In perfect unison. Idiots! The clown man exclaimed, and laughed loudly. The laugh was so deep and disturbing, it almost felt as if the sky above them would shatter and fall, crushing them. Actually, at this point, it was sort of what both troopers were hoping for. It wasn't the recon mission that sucked. It was being with him. Finally, the clown man and his two troopers arrived at Figaro's front gates. The soldier who was at post that had welcomed Locke and Terran now looked up, absolutely frightened, and gulped. Sir Kefka! He cried. What on earth do? Out of my way! Kefka squealed, and shoved the soldier aside. Pushing open the Figaro gates himself, Kefka stomped his way through the small hall and out into an open court of the castle and then stopped. His troopers stopped promptly behind him, and saluted each other. A few moments later, Edgar arrived, walking slowly and calmly towards Kefka, who couldn't seem to keep still. He was tapping his foot on the floor and adjusting the vibrant feather hair piece in his hair. Just to annoy Kefka, Edgar went up to his two troopers first. He was actually a bit worried and needed information he was sure Kefka would not share. I thought... We were allies. Edgar said in a hushed whisper to one trooper. What are you doing in my domain? He turned to the other trooper. Looking for more cities to destroy. That's for us to know. They both replied in unison, and Edgar sighed. Being allies with the Empire did not guarantee anything, it seemed. Edgar looked to Kefka and tried not to shudder. Kefka's interest in making himself look as atrocious and frightening as possible was working well. He reminded Edgar of a staring object in his childhood nightmares. Nonetheless, Edgar put on a charming smile and put these thoughts aside. What brings Kefka? Loyal servant to Emperor Gestal, into our lowly presence? Edgar asked calmly. A girl of no importance recently escaped from us. Kefka said dryly. We heard she might have found refuge here. Edgar played dumb and put on his thinking face, crossing his arms over his chest. Hum. This wouldn't have anything to do with this which everyone has been whispering about, would it? Edgar asked slyly. Lies. Kefka burst out, making his two troopers jump ten feet into the air. She merely... Stole something of minor value. Is she here? If she is of no importance, 
and stole something of minor value, then why do you care, you foolish clown? Edgar thought. Your own lies make as much sense as that horrendous outfit you are wearing. Edgar wanted to point all of this out, but kept it to himself instead to share as a joke with Locke later on. Hmm. That's a tough question. Edgar exclaimed, and Kefka face vaulted. What? Kefka cried. Edgar grinned. You see? There are more girls here, than grains of sand out there. Edgar exclaimed proudly, and extended his arms to indicate the Figaro desert. I can't keep track of them all. Instead of laughing, Kefka merely smirked and put his hands on his hips. I'd hate to be you. If we found out you're lying. Kefka said in a low tone, and turned to leave with his troopers behind him. But before he reached the doorway to exit the court, he turned again towards Edgar and spoke in a louder tone so that everyone else in the court could hear. I truly hope nothing happens to your precious Figaro. Mwaha! With that, Kefka left, and Edgar let out a breath of relief. He turned himself and walked back up the stairs to the entrance where he had come from, only to see Locke leaning against the doorway arms crossed over his chest. I'd say that guy was missing a few buttons. Locke commented, but Edgar shook his head. Where is Tara? He asked worriedly. Locke stepped aside and the doors opened, revealing a very frightened Tara. He face was pale, and her hands were clasped together so tightly, her knuckles had turned white. She had heard everything. The man's voice and laughter had been imprinted on her mind, and she remembered her dream when she had fallen in the Narsh mines. Had that man been the one who gave her the slave crown? Edgar realized she was not in the condition to hear any more from him or Locke. They had traveled all night, and now it was morning. She needed rest. Take her to her room, Edgar said to Locke, and Locke nodded in reply. Tara shot Edgar a suspicious glance, but Edgar smiled and patted her shoulder. I'd love to chat with you, but the Chancellor and I must plan our strategy. Sometimes I hate being a king. Edgar expected Tara to giggle, but instead, she stared at him blankly. Edgar sighed. If you'll excuse me. With that, Edgar pushed past Locke and Tara and walked back to his throne room, closing the doors in Tara's face. Tara looked to Locke, but instead, he sighed himself and jerked a thumb to his right. Follow me, he said, and began to walk. Tara did as she was told, and soon, she found herself in a comfortable bedchamber that she had passed through before on her little exploration trek. She collapsed on the bed, realizing just how exhausted she was, and looked to Locke. He smiled and ran his fingers through his hair. He's always smiling. Tara thought. It's like he doesn't have a care in the world. If only I were Locke Cole right now instead of Tara. Then maybe I could figure something out to help myself. Don't you worry about a thing. Locke exclaimed. I'll. Tara stopped him by holding up a finger. Locke. She said. Edgar told me about you. Is it true you are a thief? Edgar had not really said such a thing, but she had heard that in some of the commotion she overheard in the castle. Locke turned red and shoved his hands in his pockets. That's Treasure Hunter! He cried. Tara finally managed to crack a smile, which calmed Locke immediately. He sat down beside Tara on the bed and began to speak in a low whisper. On the surface, 
Edgar pretends to support the Empire. The truth is, he's collaborating with the Returners, an organization opposed to the Empire. I am his contact with that group. The old man you met in Narsh is one of us. Tara blinked. It all made sense now. Edgar had seemed awfully opposed to letting Tara meet with his allies. She now saw that it was a trick. That meant Locke, Edgar, and the man in Narsh were enemies of the Empire, but yet, they were protecting one of its soldiers. Her. Empire. Tara trailed off. But I'm a soldier of the Empire. Locke shook his head. That's not true. They were using you. Things are different now. Tara widened her eyes. I don't understand. Tara trailed off. What should I do? I can't tell you what to do. Locke said. But you don't have to decide right now. You'll soon find your way. With that, Locke stood up and left the bedchamber, closing the door behind him. Tara stared after him and then fell back on the bed, her heart racing. But how do I know? Which way is right? Tara slept for the rest of the day, her adventures finally taking their toll on her body. After Locke and Edgar had another short meeting with the Chancellor, Locke went to bed himself, and Edgar proceeded with the rest of his day alone. He could not help but worry about Kefka, even though the plan he, Locke, and the Chancellor had made was sure to work if needed. Locke had a hard time sleeping, like usual. Nightmares crept in and out of his mind, causing him to toss and turn in bed. It was the usual thing. It was always about her. Her scream, the look on her face, before and after everything had happened. Locke gasped and woke up, sweat dripping down his forehead. When he looked out the window, he could see that the sky had gotten dark. Has he slept the whole day? He must have. Locke sighed and flopped back on his pillow, pushing his hair out of his eyes. Tara reminded him of her in almost every way there was, except for looks. He knew that was why he had wanted to help her so badly. She was alone and pathetic. With amnesia. It didn't have anything to do with the returners, it had to do with... Her. Locke began to wonder if he could keep his promise to Tara. He wouldn't be able to, if she wanted to go back to the Empire. Meanwhile, Edgar was also thinking about Tara, while lying in bed. He himself was still trying to figure out why the Empire found her so valuable. He knew that Kefka had said she was of no importance, which meant she had to have been important. Why was the Empire so bent out of shape about her being missing? She seemed like a normal Imperial soldier. Did she know why? Did she have any idea at all why they wanted her? Her amnesia had become a real roadblock. Suddenly, the Chancellor rushed in, in his nighttime robes. Edgar sat up and gasped. What's going on? Edgar cried. Sir, you must throw your clothes on and please come out here immediately. Chancellor said, without much breath in his voice. He left, and Edgar crawled out of bed. What they? A few moments later, Edgar emerged from his bedchamber, only to find Figaro Castle on fire. Although it was not very big yet, the small flames that were slowly eating at the castle's protective coverings were getting larger, and already the castle soldiers were freaking out. Fire! They all cried, running about frantically to warn everyone. What's happening? 
Edgar cried, whirling around. Another soldier ran up to him. It's the Empire. It's Kefka. The soldier ran off, and Edgar was soon approached by Kefka moments later, with his two troopers. Fire! Fire! He he he! The troopers snickered with one another as Kefka smiled evilly. Bring me the girl, now! Kefka demanded. I don't know what you are talking about! Edgar cried nervously, but he knew it was too late. In the end, Kefka always found out and got what he wanted, no matter what sacrifice it took. Kefka shrugged. Then welcome to my barbecue. You wahaha. -ha. Edgar sighed. He knew what he had to do now. He turned and ran back to the throne room doors, speaking with a soldier posted there. Get ready. He whispered. Yes sir. The soldier said, and went into the throne room doors. Changed your mind? Kefka asked, as he approached Edgar. Edgar looked at him sadly. I guess I have no choice. He said, and turned toward a castle wall. He suddenly let out a high whistle, and three chocobos appeared below. Edgar dove off of the wall and landed on one of them, waving to Kefka as the chocobo kicked up sand. Or maybe I do. Kefka giggled. Ack, shameful a king should flee, leaving his people behind. How utterly delightful! Edgar rode the chocobo at blinding speed to the other side of the castle, where Locke and Tara were waiting on a wall. Jump! Edgar exclaimed, and with that, Locke and Tara both took flying leaps, landing on the second and third chocobos that were following Edgar's. As they were riding further and further away from the palace, Edgar shouted, Okay! Dive now! Yahoo! Locke yelled into the nighttime sky. As the three disappeared from Figaro Palace, a soldier pulled a lever down. Figaro submerge mode engaged. All the soldiers in Figaro Castle scrambled inside for safety as the palace began to pull itself together and sink under the sands of the Figaro Desert. The Chancellor, watching Edgar and his comrades flee from the danger in the distance, gave a victory sign. No one can touch the people of Figaro! He exclaimed, and disappeared down the trap door in the tower. The castle completely submerged a minute later, leaving Kefka totally wiped out in the cool Figaro desert face first on the ground. He pulled himself out of the sand and began cursing. Go! He cried. Get them! His two troopers clanked by in Magitek armor, and began to pursue Edgar, Locke, and Tara. Locke looked behind them, hearing the noise, and freaked out. Edgar! He cried. There is Magitek armor right behind us! Edgar looked behind him briefly and nearly fell off his chocobo. How are we going to outrun that? Edgar screeched. One of the armor units suddenly shot at the ground with a tech missile, causing a huge explosion that made the chocobos go nuts. They began squawking and flapping their wings uncontrollably. But worst of all, they had stopped running. We're going to be crushed! Locke cried, when suddenly, Tara whirled around on her chocobo a frightening look in her eyes. She pulled her clasped hands apart, and Locke and Edgar could see that there was a burning glow now in between them. Fire! Tara screamed. The burning glow leaped from her hands and struck at the two armor units, suddenly igniting them in flames. The screams by the pilots inside were easily muffled by the terrific explosion that came next, 
blowing both armor units to pieces that flew and landed in random, steaming spots in the desert sands. Tara slowly lowered her hands, and found herself now being stared at by Locke and Edgar in a most peculiar way. Locke blinked and looked to Edgar. Edgar, what's the matter? You look... positively spooked. Edgar gulped and looked to Locke. Dee Dee Dee, did you just see what I saw? He asked nervously. Locke nodded and turned back to Tara. Yeah. This kid seems loaded for bear. She's amazing, Locke. That was magic. M-A-G-I-C. It suddenly sunk into Locke's mind, and he freaked out, falling off his chocobo in a fluster. I'm magic. She used magic. He cried, his heart beating frantically. Edgar hopped off his chocobo, and walked over to Locke, helping him up. They began to whisper, and Tara just watched them, her heart full of confusion. She didn't understand why they were fussing over her. What had just happened? She used her power and... She blinked and clasped her hand over her chest. What were they calling it? Magic. Edgar and Locke both turned back to Tara, walking over to her chocobo. Tara, where on earth did you learn that? Edgar asked. Tara gulped. They seemed angry. Sorry. I... Um... She began to struggle with her words. Look, I didn't mean to make such a big deal of this. Locke apologized quickly. Me either. It's just that I've never actually seen magic before. Where did you... Edgar added, without much of a reply from Tara. She just stood there, watching them with blank eyes. Edgar, Tara can use magic, and we can't. Locke said. That's the only difference between us. The fact is... We could use her help. Tara suddenly smiled, her eyes brightening. So they weren't afraid or angry. She was very relieved. Thank you. Locke, thank you Edgar. She exclaimed. I promise I'll help if anyone else comes after us. She gave a slight wink and Locke and Edgar nearly passed out. She was helping them. They now knew why the famous Imperial soldier girl was so famous. And she was assisting the returners. Tara looked at them and smirked. Stop swooning! She exclaimed, and Locke and Edgar shook themselves out of it. Climbing back on their chocobos, they once again continued on from Figaro without further interruptions. Edgar looked back and waved at the place where Figaro Palace once stood. Bravo, Figaro! Edgar called, and clapped as they rode off into the distance. Son of a submariner! Kefka shrieked. He was all alone, his troopers had been killed, and he was pissed off to no end. That little witch had been hiding there the whole time. Edgar's unwavering loyalty to the Empire had been totally fabricated, and it looked as if Edgar might even be a returner. If that were true, then that would mean the returners knew many of the Empire's greatest secrets. And that other boy? The brown, haired fellow? Who was he? A returner as well? That made him another enemy, and an annoying one at that. Kefka growled and clenched his fists together. They'll pay for this! 5. 
Duncan's son, Blitz Disciple Vargas. Chapter End